promised that this talk is going to be very light, entertaining, as much as it can be in the blockchain space. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to talk about is millions of users coming to Polkadot and how this is how. Okay. Now, uh, this is a speech. I'm doing a pitch for convincing you that the bright future is coming. Okay. So, I'm putting on my pink glasses. Okay, and I'm saying the future is bright. Okay, you can listen to me talk, or you can dive into what I'm talking about and decide for yourself if that is true or not. Uh, I certainly will tell you it's the truth, but you decide for yourself. So, when I talk about uh, Polkadot and why is it the best, coolest blockchain technology out there, I tell them because their NFTs are awesome, okay? So, pink glasses on and let's go. They're the fastest, they're the most flexible, versatile, everything. They're the richest in functionality, they can do stuff nobody else can do. And uh, for people who, there are a few people on this planet who care about the um, planet, so it is the most eco-friendly, okay? So this is me saying it. Now this is, uh, uh, now, let's get into the proof of what I said. So, about six months ago, a little over that, we did performance testing and improvement. And these are the results. We tested, uh, we've, we looked for the most, well, the fastest NFT mints on the fastest 20 chains biggest 20 chains, and uh, what we found is that after we did our performance improvements, uh, Polkadot, and namely Unique, was three times faster than Solana. Now, Solana can do very things very, very fast, but it's uh, not reliable. It doesn't do it all the time. It does it one minute, they mint 15,000 NFTs, because theoretically that's what they can do, but then the network gets congested, and the next minute they mint three NFTs a minute. So overall, the fastest mint on Solana we found at that time was about 1,500. We can do 5,500, and this is even before the uh, uh, asynchronous backing that's going to increase our speed by two to six times. We'll see. We'll get there. So fastest check. Uh, this is the this is what we used for training for. Uh, performance testing. This is the collection we created. 100,000 NFTs in 18 minutes and 42 seconds. So looking forward to asynchronous backing to break our own uh, speed record. So uh, I talked about functionality. Uh, in smart contracts you can do all of this stuff on a number of chains, but they're very clunky and they require uh, a group of developers who know this stuff inside out. Uh, in Polkadot, you can do all this stuff with the JavaScript developer in a few days, and we've done it. We can show you that cap, uh, De uh, Dead Minds game that was launched this February was done by a guy who didn't know what nonce is. He st still doesn't really. So, uh, and he used he made 300,000 uh, nested NFTs that you know people were just claiming and claiming and claiming like crazy. So, check. Okay, eco-friendly. This is logarithmic scale, by the way, if you don't see the numbers. So, uh, Polkadot and namely Unique is the most eco-friendly chain for NFTs out there, by far. You don't spend much energy, you don't burn the planet by, you know, creating the NFTs, and if that's not enough, we have even created carbon offsets, official ones, very kind of, you know, with all the traceability. So, if there are projects that want to have uh, want to show their commitment to uh, the planet, uh, they can use that, okay? Uh, now, uh, this, is, this is where things get really interesting is flexibility. Uh, in, Polka, in every chain you go about there, you go and ask them, okay, so how do I do NFTs on, you know, on this chain or another? And they give you, here it is, okay? One, two, three, done. In Polkadot, you have many options. Polkadot is not opinionated on that. There are smart contract options, just like on EVM chains, the same old 
ERC721, Solidity, uh, for good measure. There's a crazy group of devs early in the Polkadot ecosystem that is still around a little bit, who have done the uh, customizable NFT standard nesting. Uh, on EVM that you can use. They created this year, uh, C6059 and others. Um, uh, we use Ink as well, that has all the same stuff, but just on the Ink, which is Rust language. A lot of people who use it, they love it. You know, not too many people use it, though. Uh, but what's most interesting about Polkadot is its native capabilities, uh, which means uh, because of Substrate gives you ability to create a natively uh, any blockchain functionality, that's what we did, and not only us, but a number of others. So we created an NFT palette, which basically creates NFTs just like a smart contract, and then does all the different operations with them. For good measure, there's not only ours, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, NFTs palette that we intend to make a standard. Uh, in Polkadot ecosystem, that's fairly simple, but uh, but it does all uh, all the things that it's necessary. Uh, and there are actually f around four, I think, more that are kind of mostly single chain things. When somebody wants to do something on their own, something for their own purposes, they, you can do that. So in Polkadot, if you're a developer, you're not constrained to just go this way, just like everybody else. No, you can optimize things for yourself. And, and that's kind of important. And uh, uh, that, so that shows um, uh, if there are NFT projects that are coming to the ecosystem, they can, they have, uh, they can choose the partners they go with. They go with, uh, uh, they can go with different parachains that do different things. This is kind of, the positioning that I uh, I put together for different, uh, well, no, this is not a position. This is the the technology that different power chains use, um, and every project that comes to the ecosystem can and must choose uh, some of these, or they have to create their own power chain. Um, NFTs are good for gaming, and there's been a lot of action around gaming in Polkadot ecosystem lately, and. Uh, for that, too, you have a number of teams that are assisting. So we have Dot .play now, that is a business development arm that's an uh, uh, organization that's created to support games. But then you have, uh, you have a number of power chains to do that as well. So uh, this is kind of what I meant when I said on the first slide that the Polkadot NFTs are the most awesome on the planet. Okay. Now, uh, you cannot live life with pink glasses on all the time, so let's take a look at what the problems are a little bit, but at least for a minute, okay? Then, I'm putting, uh, then I, I'll put them back on. Uh, so the biggest problem that we have in the ecosystem right now is fragmentation. We have, I don't know, 20 different players who are all, um, I like to put it this way, who all have shovels and they dig holes to find users somewhere where the oil should be, um, and they use shovels for it. And that's not enough, okay? So what we propose to do about that, and what we are in the process of creating is something that will make me put my pink glasses back on and kind of think that everything is good. So, so uh, we, will, uh, we are creating the NFT collective for Polkadot. Uh, that would be an organization that represents NFTs in the ecosystem. So anybody coming in to the ecosystem and wants to do NFTs can come to it and ask whatever they want, and they'll get answers. That's the, that's a, the short wor version of it. What it will do, uh, there's a DF application in the process for this. should be decided uh, in the next month or two. Uh, but it would do governance. It would uh, cover technical things. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, we need to define what is standard and create uh, very powerful tooling around that. Instead of having shovels, we need digging machines, bulldozers that have enough gas in them to get to millions of users. That's as simple as that. Uh, on business development front, we'll just do support. There's a number of good business development groups already in the ecosystem funded in the last six months. Um, and then in marketing, uh, there's a number of things we know how to do. 
So we'll hopefully use the agencies that are in the ecosystem to amplify those messages and uh, activities and so on. So, uh, and uh, this is something that has been cooking for quite some time now. Well, short, certainly for more than half a year, about a year maybe. Um, we are doing, uh, we are creating NFT XTM, which is ability to move NFTs between different parachains. And that is basically in acceptance now at Parity. Uh, should be by fall, should be accepted, and then it should go into production, I hope, with XTM 5. Um, so, should happen by the end of the year, I hope. Uh, we have made the NFT SDK for all major pallets, including ours and NFTs, and uh, uh, the integration with the uh, wallets, with uh, block explorers has been done, so there's a lot of things you can do now already. Um, we launched the cross-chain NFT think, think tank. Uh, we're going to kind of activate that a lot this fall, where the NFT XCM is going to kind of inspire us to try to see, look for and support use cases that are multi-chain. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of interesting ones. And uh, Polkadot is the only one who, who will have that capability at such a, a good level. So um, looking forward to that. And uh, OK, uh, the Deadmine game was a nice kind of introduction to the whole ecosystem. This is something that uh, guy before, those guys before me, so SNI uh, guys, <laughs> this is um, an example. So I, I support very much uh, Bruno Schwartz was for years talking about dog fooding. So using the tools we build, using the stuff we build, uh, please just, you know, uh, scan this uh, NFT. This is something that uh, uh, Sovereign Nature guys created um, for as a pop for this event. But it's just the beginning. It's actually the first one in the series of events over the course of next year that will change. That will become. Uh, this will be a dynamic NFT that will change depending on how many of these events you uh, visit in person or not. I don't know. So. Uh, with that, I give it to questions. If there are any who gives the best question, I give him the glasses and uh, wish him the uh, everything best in life. So, shoot. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah. What are the what are the benefits besides speed to mint uh, inside of the polka the ecosystem in general and on unique? So not only speed, but definitely there are kind of uh, some secret sauce, right, that you have that like a kind of, I don't know, uh, help us to move this kind of uh, further besides competing in performance. OK, you must have slept through the beginning. <laughs> OK, this was the first, second, third, fourth. OK, so pick, pick and choose. Whatever works for like, you. Uh, for example, the functionality, like. How but, okay, I'll. Uh, early, let me let me give you a kind of an overview. What you did, what you did with this thing, the the, the dolphin. Uh, I had some friends from Snarkart here the, early this morning. It took them usually, you know, two to three devs, two to three months to do that on Solidity. Okay, how long did it take you? Uh, one week alone, uh, but with the help of the unique team. Okay. Next time it's going to take you two days. We'll take it. No, but, but one week total, like, so assets, so not only the chain integration. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, you know, that, that's why. Okay. Next. You, somebody else had a question? No? Anybody? Okay. Beautiful. Vadim gets the glasses. Thank you very much, and see you all later. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>